guest tonight is a new conservative writer who's in the country for the Australian Think Inc. event Polarised alongside Dr Cornell West. His book is The Strange Death of Europe, Immigration, Identity, Islam. We do have a problem. We have a problem when the failures of Islam throughout the world, the failures of all Islamic societies, come here into Britain. Their intolerance of freedom of conscience, their intolerance of apostates, their intolerance of freedom of expression and freedom uh, of speech. The truth is, the great disappointment of the last 14 years has been that civil society has failed, that um, we can't do the things to the Islamists that we would do as I referred to to the neo-Nazis. Please welcome Douglas Murray, everybody. Hello. Welcome, Hi. Douglas. Thanks for coming on the show. I know you, you're very concerned about Western civilization. This show is technically part of the Western canon. Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah, the, de the decline in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a show. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it very much. I uh, just need to make a disclaimer at the top. Myself and the executive producer of this program, Dan Illich, are involved in your tour with Dr Corner West in the country. That was separate to the decision to book you on the show. We haven't been bribed into having a new conservative on the ABC, but I need to put that out there. Um, if people aren't familiar with your work, what, what is this strange death of Europe that you refer to? Um, well, for many years I've travelled um, as a reporter, as a journalist across the Third World and Middle East, Africa, many of the war zones of these areas, seen many of the places where people are fleeing from. And in 2015, I was reporting from across my continent, across Europe, uh, when people were coming in unprecedented numbers. We were talking about um, the German population taking in an additional 2% in a single year alone, where basically the German Chancellor said, anyone who makes it to Europe can come. And uh, I did, saw, the, saw all of this firsthand, and I realized that there was a catastrophe in the making, a catastrophe which I think is already started to unfurl in the years since. I, I realise this is just a version of a problem that every country is having to think about. And we're very lucky countries, yours and mine. We're countries that people want to come to. And that isn't an easy thing to deal with because we know that we cannot take in the world and yet we can't have the conversation about what we can do. And I thought that we need to think about this much more deeply than we are. The political consequences of that decision sort of flowing through Germany and affecting Angela Merkel, some changes seem to be happening. They're trying to get more um, agreements with North African countries and looking at yeah. trying to return some people they, to where they, they came from. They bribed Turkey. Right. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? Well, we, we already know some of the consequences. German elections saw a party that's generally described as far right, the AFD, is now the main party of opposition in the German parliament. Uh, unbelievable uh, social problems, unbelievable problems with freedom of expression. I mean, another data law just came in at the beginning of this year that tries to stop German citizens saying very critical things about their government on social media. And I, I just, you know, who, who could predict any problem from, for instance, suppressing the rage of the German people? Who could, who could, who could foresee any downside to that? You know. Not me. All good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think should happen now to address this situation? Look, I, I, I just, as I say, we have to think about this much more seriously and deeply than we've been thinking about it. A lot of people make a lot of very easy social capital, including a lot of politicians, make very easy social capital by basically saying, "We're generous. We're open. Let them come." They quote John Lennon quite often. And this is just, this is cheap and too easy, and it's not up to the task in hand. We have to be able to think about the speed of immigration, the type of immigration, the type of immigration we do want, and that means the type of immigration that we just don't need more of. These are really ugly and difficult conversations to have, but it's my belief that if, if we don't have them, other people will have them, and very bad people will have them. I'm not, I'm not willing to hand that terrain over. I'm just not willing to do it. That ugliness is certainly something we're wrestling with in this country. We yeah. always have with immigration in Australia, and now our population has hit 25 million people. Some people are concerned solely by the numbers of immigration that we have, others by the, the makeup of that immigration. Sure. Some are concerned by both. You talk about how London is a, min a minority white city at the moment. Yeah. Uh, it's currently reached that point. In the future, there are predictions that the UK and America will become minority white mm. countries. And I guess when I hear those phrases or those concerns, or when I hear people say phrases like, this part of Sydney doesn't look like how Australia sure, is supposed yeah, to yeah. look, that makes me feel very nervous. Yeah, sure, rightly, it makes rightly. me wonder, what, what are these countries supposed to look like and who gets to decide that? Sure. Well, um, it should be decided by governments which should be accountable to the people. And if the people want such a change to happen, then you can do it. The problem I identify across Europe is that it happens in the face of public uh, uh, hopes and public desire where the politicians end up berating the public rather than trying to listen to them or trying to answer them. And this, again, is a, 
is a problem that is just exploding everywhere. Look at Italy is one of the founding members of the EU. It's a massively important economy in Europe. And the public there are so angry that they just voted into a government, a party again that is generally described as far right, the League, and a party founded by a comedian, uh, the Five Star Movement, which literally doesn't know what it wants to do. It is a protest vote that has become government, OK? I mean, you can say all sorts of things and make a lot of jokes about Italian politics, but it literally being run by comedians is... is <laughs> Sounds fucking awesome, i got to yeah. say. <laughs> you, should, um, you should look into this as a career move. Would anyone vote for me? <laughs> well, well, that was reluctant. <laughs> <laughs> What about the way these conversations and the, or the way they affect uh, immigrants who are already here? We can talk about, we could close the borders tomorrow and let nobody in uh, left. Where there is a huge immigrant population um, in Australia. The phrase, you know, a country uh, built by immigrants is regularly used since the white yeah. Australia policy thing, since we yeah, wrapped that up. It depends what you mean by immigrants in Australia. I mean, I mean sure. what do you mean when you say that? Uh, immigrants, people who have um, immigrated post the, the white Australia policy, I think certainly that, right. that's a big part of it, of, of what we make up the immigrant population, but indeed... Because yes. it's, it's an important question. I mean, is somebody an immigrant once they become a citizen? I'd say not. You, they cease to be an immigrant. They cease to yeah. be an immigrant. Once you're a citizen, you're not an immigrant anymore. Right. You're an Australian. Yeah. Well, there are plenty of citizens, people who are born and raised from, say, the Sudanese community in Australia. There's a lot of focus on um, that particular immigrant community in Melbourne at the moment. Because and of the home invasion. There are some issues yeah. surrounding the over-representation over of that community in crime statistics. Yeah. This video went uh, a little bit viral on Vice, uh, Vice Australia last week. This is some Sudanese youth recounting some of the feedback and some of the conversation that's happening online at the moment when it comes to their community. What more do you want? You people in Canberra, this is our country. Please send them back. They don't deserve to be here. And they are used to fighting and destroying other people's businesses, lives and homes, for God's sake. Can't you see what is happening? We will be taken over by them. And that is for sure. You are a bunch of idiots if you don't see this happening. I say concealed firearms should be considered in Australia. If they're yeah. that much of a danger, they should be shot. I mean, how do we have this conversation without that kind of shit happening? Well, that, look, that's just a risk you're going to have to take, isn't it? Because the alternative is you shut everyone up, which isn't going to work. You're not going to be able to tell people don't speak about things because they may not speak about things, but they'll keep thinking things. And it's much better that you know what they're thinking than that, that everyone hides it from you. It's going to be a lot better in the long term. But this, this, this points exactly to the central of, center of a conundrum, which is uh, uh, there are specific issues that specific communities bring, undoubtedly. There are specific benefits that the communities bring, undoubtedly, and specific downsides. One thing which has... I, I've seen this throughout Europe. If, look, if, for instance, people flee a specific war zone, for instance, Somalia, speak to anyone who's fled Somalia in recent years. They have seen things that you can't imagine. Now, it's very likely these people also are going to have a different attitude toward violence as a result. And we have seen this in gangs in London in recent years. Uh, a, a Somali gang moves into an area and they are willing to do things that other gangs won't do and that causes a rise in violence gang to gang to gang. OK. That doesn't mean you don't invite any Somalis. It doesn't mean you don't have any asylum policy. But, like, you're a damn fool if you're not going to think about that and find some way to address it, because otherwise you leave it to people to start gestating and, 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 and becoming vile and becoming angry against everybody. So, you know, th this, is, this, is, this is the central stupidity of the assumption of multiculturalists who believe in that not as an idea but as a policy, that you make things multicultural. The central problem they keep on coming to is this. They think in, in a diverse society we should hear less views, we should clamp down on views. Look, the more diverse your society, the more views you're going to have to hear. Get used to it. And some of that's going to be really ugly and unpleasant. Well, as I say, what are your alternatives? Because shutting up cannot be one of them. Well, if you'd like to catch Douglas Murray and hear more of his views, you can catch him at Dr Corner West in Melbourne tomorrow, Sydney on Wednesday and in Brisbane on August 19th. Thanks very much for being here. Please thank him, D Douglas Murray, everybody. <laughs>